All right, so this is uh, part two of the 5.5 assignment because we ran out of time there. So going to number 27 is where I left off. We're going to respond in the following ways to 27 and 29 and actually all the way through these next ones here. Um, and we're going to say either it cannot be solved with the law of signs, there's no triangle formed, or we're going to solve the triangle. So let's go ahead and first identify what's happening here. So in the first one, we have angle A, which is 61 degrees, across from side A, which is 8. And then uh, angle B would be here, and so side B would be 21, meaning that there might be two cases to this one. So I'm just going to go through and set up to see if there are two cases, meaning our sine of 61 over 8 is going to be set up with sine of angle B, which we don't know, over 21. And we're going to see if we can solve that in order to get B, which means that we then would be able to solve the triangle. All right, so I'm going to cross multiply uh, sine of 61 and 21 and divide by 8, and then take the sine inverse to get angle B. And so it turns out that we'd have to take the sine inverse of, oh, let's see, anyway, a number that's like two point something, and so because of that it's got an error, and so that means that we cannot make a triangle, and so it's going to be A, um, sorry, B, no triangle is formed. Uh, then in number 29, if we draw the triangle, we've got 136 degrees and a 15 side and a 28 side. And right away I can tell this one is not possible because this side is larger than this side. But if you take a look at the angle measures that we've already taken, the leftover angles for angle B and angle C is only 44 degrees because of 180 being in a triangle, and that's not possible because 44 is less than 136, and this side is bigger, and so across from it has to be a bigger side, or a bigger angle. Because as we know from geometry, a larger angle is across from a larger side, versus the smallest angle is across from the smallest side. So that means that we can't actually make a triangle. So again, part B, uh, there's no triangle formed. Uh, you could have also gone through and tried the proportions as well to see if it worked or not. Uh, then the same thing happens for number 31 and 33. Again, we're trying to identify if we can solve, or cannot solve, sorry, with the law of sines, no triangle is formed or to solve the triangle. All right, so taking a look at this one, we've got angle B, which is 42. Across from B, um, don't have a side length. Uh, but C is 39, and across from that is 18. And so, oh, because there's two angles, I can't necessarily say that it's anything about two, in, two sides, uh, sorry, two types of triangles or not. All right, so our next one here, just to double check that we know what's going on, uh, is an angle measure of B. Oh, and we have C as well. So we can set up, um, and again, this is two angles in a side, so not two sides in an angle, so we don't have to check that ambiguous case. Um, but we can set up a proportion of sine of C over 18. Um, and actually, are we supposed to? Yeah, we are supposed to solve. And then, um, and C is actually 39, so we'll just fill that in. And then B, so sine of 42 over the B side length. All right. So if we cross multiply and divide, we're going to get sine of 42 times 18 divided by sine of 39. And so we get a B value of 19.1387. And then, let's see, oh, to get the angle A, 
we can take 180 minus the two known angle measures. So 180 minus 42 minus 39. So that gives us 99 degrees. All right. Uh, and so we have angle A and B, and now we need side A. So we can use that same sign setup of 39 over 18 and set it equal to sine of 99 over our missing side length A. And then again, cross multiply the two digits and divide by the third. So sine of 99, of course, in degree mode, times 18 divided by sine of 39, boop, is 28.25. Oh, one, if you want that. All right. So that is the piece there. Okay. And then let's see the next one. Uh, does have two sides, so just kind of an image of what we're looking at. Angle C, side C is 48, and then this side is 49, and so because this one is larger than that one, uh, we have two triangles. So, as we go through, we can set up this proportion of sine of 75, over 48, and that's going to be set equal to our B of 49, but then the fact that we don't know the angle B up here. Solve by cross multiplying and divide by 48, so sine of 75 times 49 divided by 48 leaves us with 0 0.9860. Uh, and that's equal to sine of B. So we need to do the sine inverse of both sides uh, in order to get our angle measure. And so we get a B value of, an angle B, of 80.4183. But of course the alternate B value is going to be when we take 180 minus 80.4183 and so that's going to be our second B value. And so there we go. So that's going to be 99.58 degrees for the alternate B value. And so now we can use that to find our C values. So our C value in the first piece is going to be 180 minus 75 minus 80.42 and then the other one is going to come from 180 minus 75 minus 99.58 so our first C value is minus 80.42 minus 75 is 24.58 and then our second one is 180 minus 75 minus 99.58 so 5.42 all right and so on that note uh, we are going to have the next C side length or sorry it's not C what are we trying to find? A, sorry. Okay, so anyway, angle A is that, and so then we can use our setup from the beginning of sine of 75 over 48 in order to find angle we already have all the angles in order to find side A. So sine of 24.58 to find side A. And then same proportion over here, sine of 75 over 48, but now equal to sine of 5.42. Did this last time. Just put an arrow over A. So when we cross multiply sine of 24.58 
and multiply by 48 and divide by sine of 75, we get our A value, oops, hello, pen is not working, A value of 20.67. And then this one has an A value, if you multiply across and divide by sine of 75, is sine of 5.42 times 48 divided by sine of 75. So 4.69. So just to reiterate, uh, let's see, the first triangle has this B value, and this A value and this side A value. And then the second um, triangle has this B value, this A value, and this A length. All right, super. And then the last one here uh, is not gonna have a lot of work because it turns out uh, that this one can't actually be solved with law of sines. Why? Because if you have angle B, you need side B, otherwise you can't make a proportion. And we only have side B is 30, sorry, angle B is 31 degrees, and not knowing uh, the side B, but knowing side A is 8, and side C is 11. Cool, but because it's not known, we cannot make a ratio of all numbers sine of 31 over B um, is not helpful. All right, so moving on to our last few problems. Of course, they are images involved, applications. So we've got two markers, A and B, on the same side of a canyon rim. Oh, good. And the canyon rim is 56 feet apart. Okay, oh, the two spots on that one. Okay, I thought it was, okay. Um, a third marker C is located across the rim. Excellent, and it's positioned so that B, A, C, B, A, C, so this angle over here is 72 degrees, and A, B, C is 53 degrees. Okay, and so we need to find the distance between C and A. All right, so that is uh, technically side B. So in order to find side B, that means that I'm going to need to get angle C so I can set up a proportion of sine C over C. And so sine C, meaning 180 minus the two angles given, leaves us with an angle C of 180 minus 72 minus 53 is 55. So we have 55 degrees for sine, uh, for C, so sine of 55 over the length of side C, which is 56, is going to equal angle B, so sine of 53 degrees over side B, which we don't know yet. So then we cross multiply sine of 53 times 56 divided by sine of 55. So sine of 53 times 56 divided by sine of 55 is a B value of 54.60 feet. Cool. And again, side B is technically side CA, according to the diagram. All right. Then the next one, we need to find the distance between the two canyon rims. So we are now trying to find this perpendicular distance. So let's draw a little diagram to help us out. Here's the canyon walls, if you will, and the triangle that we're talking about. Let's see, I'll make this B and C and A. And then if we put in what we know, we have 56, and then the one we just found, 54.60. Then our angles, let's see, angle B is over here, so it's 53. Angle A, 
is a given as 72, and angle C is 55. All right, so because of that, it turns out we're trying to find the height between them, right, the, at 90 degrees. So we've actually made a right triangle. Hmm. And we know this one hypotenuse side, we know one angle, and we want to find this. So we are technically trying to solve what is this side length, given this is 54, this is 72, and this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse. Well, according to Sokotoa, that means we want sine of 72, and it's going to equal opposite, which is A, over hypotenuse, which is 54.60. And so to solve, I'd multiply this 54 over to the other side. So sine of 72 times 54. And that means we get the height, or A, of 51.93 feet. Alright, and then the last guy here is finding two lighthouses, A and B, are known to be exactly 20 miles apart. Excellent. On the north-south line. Oh, okay, so it's completely vertical. Got it. A ship's captain at S measures the angle of ASB. ASB, okay. To be 33 degrees mentioned in the diagram. And a radio operator at B measures angle ABS. And we need to find the distance from the ship to each lighthouse, meaning both side lengths. So that means I need to find uh, this side length, which I'll call B, and this one, which we'll call A. All right, so let's see. Definitely going to use Law of Sines to find this, because um, I have a proportion I can set up of S with side S. So sine of 33 and 20 is going to equal angle B, so sine of... 52 over B, and we'll cross multiply and divide, and realize that between A, S, or side B on my diagram, sine 52, oops, times 20 divided by sine of 33 is 28.9370 miles. All right, so that's A to S, so the ship to lighthouse A. And then the ship to lighthouse B is going to be sine of 33 over 20 again, but now equal to sine of, didn't calculate it yet, that angle measure is 180 minus 33 minus 52. So minus 85, so 95 degrees. Just double checking. All right, so sine of 95 over the side we don't know, which is A in this case. So A is from B to S. And so if we cross multiply sine of 95 times 20 and then divide by sine of 33, 95 times 20 divided by sine of 33, that gets us 36. 0.5818 miles. Well, that's a very large distance. Okay. Woohoo! And we're done. So that was part B of our assignment there. So just so that we are aware, that was the second half.